and we're live Woohoo! welcome along to the live stream welcome along to adorama tv for those that don't know me let me introduce myself hello i'm gavin hoey i'm one of the presenters right here on adorama tv and you are watching adorama tv live unless you're watching the recording in which case you're watching adorama tv live recorded does that work maybe that works if you're watching the recording hello recorded people say hello in the comments if you're watching live Say, I know you've been saying hello in the comments already, so that's kind of really good. Hello, everybody. Right, should we get on? Should we say hello? We've got some people here in the background. You, you can see them and you can hear them. I've got the awesome Freya on the Super Switcher and Sam on the comments. Ooh. Hi, everyone. Yeah, we've got loads of people here tonight. Uh, we've got a few people eating their dinner while they're uh, watching, which nice. is nice. Uh, let us know what you're having. Uh, and uh, shall I let you know where people are from? That would be good. Yeah, be good, why not? We'll put this together. Okay, so we've got uh, Vienna. We've got Pennsylvania. We've got Delaware. We've got New Zealand. Just picking a few here. Uh, Austria. We've got uh, South Germany. Belgium. Uh, Miami. Uh, New Jersey. Lisbon. Uh, Italy, but that's it. I'll, I'll just stay there. That's, we're just, we're just going to Italy. Quite a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Wherever you're joining us from, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. If you've got any comments or questions, uh, pop them in the chat as we go through. And if they're kind of relevant to what we're doing or slightly interesting, Sam will fire them over to me. Um, also, if you haven't already done so, give it a thumbs up. I know we haven't done anything yet, but it helps with the algorithm to get it going. So uh, yeah, let's, let's crack on. So today, the theory for this live stream is really simple. I've got a small studio and for everybody that keeps asking how big is my studio, it is 15 feet across that way and well normally 17 feet but I lose about half of that because of all the, the equipment that you just saw on the screen. So I have roughly 15 by let's call it 8 as a maybe 10 as a normal area but today no 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 today I've got 8 feet by 8 feet or 2.4 meters by 2.4 meters if you're in the UK. So basically this rug is my entire studio. I wanted to recreate the feel of a really small studio space uh, and, and then just see what I can do in this limited area. So eight feet square and about eight feet, maybe a little bit less in height as well. So I'm gonna try and stay within the edge of my, my studio. Now obviously some, some are gonna be easier than others, but you've got to imagine that there are walls here and here. I was going to build some, but, oh, hello, yes, up there. Um, I was going to build some, but that obviously had practical limitations. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to work in a small space. I'm going to tell you some of my, my thinking and thoughts about small space photography. And I'm not going to be doing it on my own because give it up for the awesome Sophie. Woo! Sophie's going to be the model. If you want to find out about Sophie, you'll find her Instagram in the video description down below. Go check her out. Oh, and before anybody asks, yes, I have a cold. Don't suppose anyone's noticed, but uh, getting over it, I'm all right. Anyway, last week was terrible. So, um, yeah, let's get on with some lighting. Uh, camera would be a good thing. So if you've seen Adorama live before, or in fact any Adorama video, you probably know how we like to start our videos. And this isn't an Adorama thing. We all do it because it is a sensible thing to do. But in a small space, this becomes even more important. What am I gonna do? What is gonna be my very first step? Actually, my first step is getting to know Sophie and having a chat and a cup of tea and, and relaxing. That's always how we start, but you don't, you don't wanna see that live. The first step is always, no flash. What's the room lighting like? Have I got control of it? And in a small space that becomes really important because it's harder to control the light in a small environment. So I'm going to turn my flash transmitter off. I'm going to turn my camera on. It is set to some default settings. My flash sync speed 250th of a second. Your mileage may vary. F5.6 for a reasonable depth of field. That might change as we go through. ISO 200, my native ISO for my particular camera, which is an OM system, OM1 today. And okay. they're, they're all on it. Uh, no flash, no picture. No flash, no picture. Black frame, black frame. Yeah, they're all on it today. It's great. Marvellous. And a lot of love for your uh, boots, so. <laughs> oh, oh, Sophie's. <laughs> Yeah, and that's a really good point actually. I'm glad somebody brought that up because I've sat Sophie down for the first set of pictures because when you're in a small space, 
If there's a height difference between you and your subject, then that becomes a lot more exaggerated. If I, I'm going to step outside of my studio, but if I was way back over here and I needed to get myself level with Sophie, if I, if I go to my eye height, we're almost the same. But as I come in, I have to start angling my camera up more. I'm not going to take a picture this close of Sophie. But you get the idea <laughs> that the more space you have, the more flatter your camera becomes. So if your model is taller than you, and let's face it, most are in my case, and I'm six foot, so I mean, in the UK, we breed them really tall, don't we? I mean, huge. <laughs> Um, so uh, you, you need to think about that, either get yourself raised up, I should get some of those apple boxes, that should be on my, my to-do list, uh, or get your model sat down lower. Okay, so Sophie, let's just take a test photo, what, no flash, no picture, here we go, no flash gives us this, oh no it doesn't because that's still running, hang on, I hope that wasn't going in the background, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Okay, there we go, I think that's zoomed in, yeah, there we are, look at that. No flash, no picture. Sophie's in there somewhere, but we're underexposing the room by enough that we can't really see Sophie in the shot. So don't worry, the, the cameras haven't broken. That is really a deliberate photo. So where are you going to start? Small space. Well, you might think the best place to begin is to get your light as far away from your subject as you can. I've only got eight feet. Sophie is, actually, how far away are you from the, the background? Let's measure this. So Sophie is, uh, okay. So Sophie is roughly, that far from the background. I'm not going to do the joke because Frey's given me the look. It's about the width of your Dad screen. Dad jokes, dad jokes. <laughs> it's about two feet, two and a half feet from the background. Okay, so uh, that's the kind of difference in, in distance we've got. So I guess this light is about six feet from Sophie, roughly. I'm going to put it in TTL mode. Let's be nice and simple. TTL mode, here we go. Kaboom! You definitely blinked. <laughs> No, it kind of half blinked. I'll be honest with you, Sophie, it wouldn't have mattered. That would have been a pretty bad photo. Just whatever. going to read this comment that you had uh, from Heidi saying that small bit of info, the height bit, just solved many issues that I've never thought of. Brilliant. There you go. You're allowed to leave. You've learnt one thing. That's always my, my goal from a, any demo is get everyone to learn one thing. And when they have, they're allowed to go. That's kind of the... So, okay, I'm glad I helped out, Heidi. That's good. Okay, so that doesn't quite work. I mean, it's all right. There's nothing technically wrong with the photo. It's correctly lit. I mean, sorry, Sophie, I won't, I won't zoom in again on that. That's fine. <laughs> Straight in your portfolio, I feel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Should we just cut the live there and just stop? <laughs> so how are we going to make this better? Well, there's lots of ways we could make it better. Um, the easiest way is just get the light closer. So the logic is have some distance between you and your subject, but that doesn't really give you the, the most control and control is what you need in a small space. In a big space, it, you've got control and, and we'll talk about why that's an issue as we go through. So I'm just going to get the same light. It's, it's around about, let me just get a rough idea. So it's, it's around about it's about that far, so about the height of your screen away from Sophie. <laughs> it's a good job you can't see the looks I'm getting from behind the camera, but <laughs> anyway, so let's pop that there. Let's get the camera. I'm going to leave it in TTL mode because these aren't going to be the best photos and I'm happy just to let the, uh, the camera and the flash do its thing. But look at this, look how much, how much better does that look? Partly because Sophie didn't blink, we'll ignore that, <laughs> but mostly because that to that just by moving the light okay we've just got that much more control the the background is the same distance away but getting the light in closer means that the inverse square law i had to say it comes into play and it becomes effectively less bright also the shadow that is in the first picture we don't really see because the the angle whoopsie let's not zoom in on that the angle of the, the light has changed, so the shadow is now dropping off out of my frame. So just by getting the light closer, we already make things better. We can take a couple of photos. Let's see if the TTL can keep up. I'm trying very hard not to step out of my little space. And you can see the joys of TTL. Sometimes it works. I was all up for putting um, electric shocks if he, he went outside the zone, but we, we didn't have time to set that up for you. No, did we and I time? was all right with that as well. Sure. That sounded fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was. Oh, it's just a shame we ran out of time. Such a shame. Oh well. Okay, that's not too bad. I kind of like that. that. I like the the feeling of these. I like that graduated effect in the top right corner as we're looking at the the images. 
I can change that. I can control that effect without having to move the light or having to move Sophie. All I need to do is feather the light. So even though we're in a small space, I can just feather the light away. Sophie, can you see any of this white still? Yes. You can. If Sophie can see the white surface, some light will always reach her. Again, I'm going to use TTL to make life quicker and easier. Can you answer a couple of questions? Of course I can. Uh, so, um, Mesrin asked, if we don't have a high flash stand, can I use flash off the wall instead? Oh, that's a good question. We're actually going to talk a bit about that in a moment or two. But yeah, if you don't have a high light stand, then light off a wall isn't going to help you necessarily. The height of the light is more important than where it's pointing, believe it or not. Because if I put the, oh, let's, let's show you, it's, it's easier to do it, isn't it? Hang on a minute. There we go. So if I didn't have a highlight stand, I just had me, let's grab that. Okay, here we go. It's still in TTL mode. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna bounce it off a wall. Here we go. Let's pop that back on again. Lovely. So I bounced it off a wall and um, it works, but because the light isn't very high, the direction of the shadows are wrong. And if I do exactly the same, I'm just going to bounce it off a wall, but hold it higher, or set it higher. There we go. Let's do that. And like that, just give ourselves a bit of room. Okay, same thing again. We'll let TTL do the heavy lifting. Okay. So this time it looks just more, it's not a great light, but it looks more sensible because now the light is coming from a, an elevated position. So the shadows are going slightly down where this one, the shadows are going at least 90 degrees or even possibly slightly up. And it just feels slightly wrong. It's hard to put your finger on what it is, but so yes, you can bounce the light off the wall, but think about the height, whatever you're doing, make sure you're aiming your light up high, the higher, most the better to some degree. Um, so yes, with a caveat. Good question. Oh, I like that question. That was what, good. What's the lens you're using as well, please? Couple oh yeah, okay. Last. I can do that. I can. Hang on a second. It's <laughs> my USB cable goes around three sides of my eight by eight temporary studio, and yet I'm still going to trip over it. Okay, so I'm using <coughs> the Olympus or OM system OM1 Mark One, if anyone's interested, and the uh, 12 to 40 millimeter lens from OM System, technically the Mark II, I think, lens that one, because it's got the bigger writing on. It's got other differences, not just the size of the writing. But um, Anyway, uh, where were we? Oh, yeah, yeah, we were pointing the light at things. Not Chloe, not, uh, Chloe so if you're not close, <laughs> so if you're not calling you a thing, <laughs> I'm calling the, uh, the wall a thing. Okay, so let's <laughs> angle it that way. Here we go. Ba -ba -ba. Okay, so I can angle the light away from Sophie, and when I do, I get a really kind of moody effect. I can angle it towards me. That's what we were doing, I remember now. It's all coming flooding back to me. I can angle it towards me and get a completely different feel. So even in a small space, the direction of the light is going to have a difference to the look that we get on Sophie, and I like that. I think that's kind of cool. That lighting works really nicely. Little catch light in Sophie's eyes, so it works. Amazing skin tones, as always. Great makeup really helps. Yeah, so, so simple. However, there's a thing. There's a thing I haven't really considered. What's going on? I can see, I can see laughing behind me. <laughs> I don't, actually, you don't I, need I don't to get involved. Know. You don't need to get involved. <laughs> I can't involved. see the That's comments. Don't get We've got involved. lots of comments about people um, really liking it because they've got a small space to work in at home. So that's really good. So if you've got a small space you're working or any size space, pop it down. Show off. Yeah, <laughs> Let us know what size space you're using at home. Careful how great. you word that. Well done. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and that, that brings me on to a thing because there's, there's something missing in this space. It is eight by eight. I, I've laid it out on the floor. Um, yeah, th these are eight by eight, but which camera am I on? <laughs> this should be a wall, shouldn't it? This should be a solid wall, or at least have a door maybe, or, and, and so should this. So there are two sides missing. So the light position that I've got here is great, but it's missing this wall here. So there isn't any fill, bounce, reflection off of this wall. So we need to flip things around to take that into account. Otherwise, I'm not playing fair, I think. So let's do that. Sophie, if you want to just hop off the chair for me, thank you very much. I will move this out of the way. 
Lovely. So there's a little thing. If you're ever doing a demo, if you're ever asked to give a demo in front of people, my thinking is you demo like this, sort of 90 degrees to the audience, and the position for your lights is on the opposite side to the audience. That, that's kind of my, my golden rules when I'm doing demos. I'm going to break that because we have a limited amount of space and I need to use these walls. So basically, I'm going to put lights in your way and myself. OK, let's pop this over here somewhere like that. OK, so if you'd like to have a seat for me. So I'm going to try and set up some dramatic lighting, something a little bit more than just straightforward headshots. It's going to be tricky. It might just take me a moment or two to get this right. As in, that's me saying it may never actually be right, but we'll see. So I'm going to feather this away. So I'm going to be standing. I'm going to be here, facing this way, obviously. OK, something like that. I'm going to pop the light behind Sophie. Oh, there we go. Oh, my mic is scratchy. OK. Oh, it's nothing worse than bad audio. OK. How's that? Hang on. No one, no one watch. We don't need the dad dancing as well as the dad jokes this week. <laughs> How's that? Fully tested. Fully tested. <laughs> I do these things for you guys. Don't do them for fun. You know. <sighs> OK. Let me know if it continues to be scratchy. OK. <laughs> All righty. Where were we? Oh, yeah. OK, so uh, I'm going to do this manually. I'm not going to rely on TTL. That's just too much. The more ob ob obtuse, obscure, the, the greater the angle away from directly in front of your model you put the flash, the harder TTL struggles to get it right in my view. So I'm going to pop this near your chin, So Here we go. And, oh, I'm going to put it into manual mode. OK, I'm going to pop this near your chin, Sophie. That's better. Oh, F18. That's quite bright. I'm working at f5.6, so I want this light to be f5.6. f3.6, it's close. f6.3, isn't that always the way? All right, okay. So just so everybody gets an idea, if you haven't got my settings yet, here he comes a little image. There it is. Okay, that's my camera settings. My ISO is slightly adrift. It should be that. So I need to adjust my settings to match that. What's your bump meter it. please? What, no, what? Your meter. My meter mm. is the Seconic 858U. You'll find links to all the gear in the video description down below. Assuming it's been updated because I left it a bit late. Uh, where were we? Yes. Okay. So. Give you one of the comments in here. <laughs> um, it's Creative Studios. If you were one of my teachers in primary school, you would be my favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I think that sums it up really. I think I've, I've reached primary school level. <laughs> And that's where I've stopped, isn't it? Let, let's be honest, what you're saying is, I can do primary school children and that's it. I think I'm all right with that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna take that as a compliment. Okay, so I'm just gonna set up the lighting and just try and get, yeah, that's kind of nice, that's okay. Let's just kind of throw that to the side slightly and see what we can get coming in here. It's gonna be the back. Uh, Sophie, can I just stand you up and move you back? There we go. Have a seat. OK, so I'm just trying to get a bit of a profile shot, a little bit of light just on Sophie. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't mind that. That's not too bad. I'm going to check my exposure. Let's just take another picture and just see where we're at. We'll do it old school trial and error. <clears throat> so here's a question. <clears throat> it's slightly bright on Sophie's face. I can change that. but. The light is all coming from the right hand side, the camera right, as we look at this. Now, if you were here at the start, no flash, no picture, yep. So all of the light is my light, I'm in control. <clears throat> so where is the light here, behind Sophie's ear, coming from? <clears throat> Excuse me a second. Do you want to just mute my microphone for a second? <laughs> Did I mention I was getting over a cold? So where is the light behind Sophie's ear coming from? Because it can't come from here because there's an ear. It's, it's you know, physical barrier. It can't, it can't. So this is one of the problems of being in a small space. The smaller your space, the more you have to start thinking about where is my light coming from? Yeah, actually somebody's popped a comment in. This is Jamie, big light spill into the voids in that room. 
exactly. And it's not necessarily the size. Big isn't necessarily the thing. I'm using small lights because we're in a small space. Yeah, they've all got it. Uh, the wall, bouncing oh, off of the wall. Reflection oh. on the back wall. Oh. Uh, bouncing off the wall. <laughs> oh, you got to stop watching Adorama TV. You guys yeah, are too good. you're too good, good yeah. Honestly, look, if I was teaching primary school children, they would not know. <laughs> they would not know. Also, a really good comment here from DP saying 500 plus viewers. Wow. wow. <laughs> but only 216 like. Push the thumbs up. You know you want to. <laughs> yeah, that would be great. Please. That would be brilliant. OK, so let's try and take roughly the same picture again. Freya, can you put it on screen so I can remind myself of what it looked like? OK, that's what we're going to try and take again, more or less. But this time, I've changed something. Did you spot what it was? Oh, I should have changed the exposure a bit, but never mind. <laughs> OK, so this time, We've got light on the corner of Sophie's ear, which makes sense. There's light going to reach there eventually, I guess. But the light behind has disappeared. So I haven't changed the camera settings. I haven't changed the flash settings. The only thing I've changed is I've put that black sheet behind Sophie. In other words, I've made one of my walls go dark. Can you see how much bounce I was getting from that wall? Absolutely loads of it. And that's something to bear in mind. If you've got a small space, what's the best colour for your walls? If you're, if you're completely at liberty to paint your studio space, whatever it is, if you've got an eight foot by eight foot small space, what's the best colour for in here? I know. I wonder if anyone else has a guess. Uh, can you let us know what the white balance is? Yep, the white balance is a custom white balance. I'm tone. set to 5,200K. Sophie, do you want to stand up because I don't want to get this in your way? <clears throat> so, the best colour, any, any thoughts? Yep, there's some thoughts. Okay. Uh, so we've got uh, black, white, grey, 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 grey. <laughs> Uh, whatever colour the wife says is going to be in the living room. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a good answer. Best answer. <laughs> uh, grey, uh, bright pink. Yeah, I mean, they're, grey, they're all right. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter, does it? White, yeah. So, in theory, um, black that is matte, matte black would make sense. But that is such a depressing colour. Your bedroom's probably matte black, isn't it? <laughs> Just realise, oh, I said the words. <laughs> I bet you painted your room black. <sighs> Anyone apart from Sophie, don't paint your, your room black because it's really dark. I mean, it's cat, it's great, is it? <laughs> uh, grey's a good choice. Grey's a kind of halfway middle ground, but no, paint it white. White's the best colour because it's really depressing. And if you want a dark colour, just get some black drapes and just do this. Otherwise, living in a really dark black or really dark grey small space is very oppressive. Um, so uh, I'm a big advocate of getting some drapes. Have a seat again for me, Sophie. Let's take the photo. OK, so I put a black background up. We're going to get basically the same shot. The black background is not going to stay black because black is the absence of light. So if you put light onto it, guess what? You get some light on it, which makes sense, doesn't it? But I can control the back of Sophie's head. So at the moment, I've got the, hang on a minute, I've got the whole fabric covering the entire area directly behind Sophie. But if I bring this, can you see what I'm doing? Can you, can, can you see that? OK, oh, thank you. <laughs> you see that? I'm putting a little gap. I'm controlling the gap. Now, if I'd have painted my, my studio black or white, uh, black or grey rather, I wouldn't have been able to do this. I mean, I could have put a reflector up, I suppose. OK, but I can just control the amount of light that bounces off the back. And we have, it's subtle, depending on the brightness of your screen, but we have a little bit of hair lightness coming through compared to before. Can you spot the difference? As I flick through them, you can just see that is with the black background covering the wall, as if the wall was painted black. And that is with the, the black fabric slightly pulled back, so you can see the difference. OK, so I'm getting a little bit of bounce just coming off that that wall just there. OK, let's take a few photos. OK, here we go. Oh, 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 I nearly stepped out. 
Whoa, that was close. <laughs> Nearly stepped out of the studio. And that's the instinctive thing, isn't it? It's kind of like, oh, I'm just going to adjust my settings. Oh, yeah, what I really want is definitely a little bit more space. Does it look good in black and white? I can hear the comments. How would that look in black and white? Let's find out. Let's pop it in black and white. It's very nearly black and white as it was. Okay, awesome. And of course, you should always move your feet. Find out what happens if you move around slightly. My black background runs out fairly quickly, so I can't go too much further than this. So, awesome. got a couple of questions. Yeah, far um, away. So, Leonardo said, uh, can you try a full body photo? Yes. <laughs> Next question. I, I, should, I should say, it's coming. It's okay. coming. I'm getting to that. It's coming. And uh, Cooley said, how would you handle it if you were working in a two-car garage? Oh, I mean, I'd get the cars out first. That would be the first thing, wouldn't it, really? Because they're going to get in the way. Although we did do a, a shoot. Remember that? Yeah. During lockdown, we did a vintage car shoot. Um, that was fun. God, I don't know which channel that was. It wasn't Adorama. I think that was Olympus as it was back then. Um, yeah, um, if they're vintage cars, I mean, that would be great. If it's a two-car garage, that's bigger than we've got here. Um, so uh, if you want to go find out that sort of size, go check out all my old videos where we were in the old studio, which effectively was the size of a, a double garage if they were parked nose to tail. Um, but yeah, just make the, sp make the space, whatever it is, the best use of it you can. Right, okay, let's do full length. Let's, let's answer that question, because that is a good question. Uh, right, let's tidy a few bits out of the way. Yeah, Sophie, you might want to just step out of the way. Not saying that I'm dangerous, but, you know. A few comments about your... Um, your Excuse me, um, that's not me, that's the... Uh, your the tether tools cable that is driving a few people mad because it's, it's so twisted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> anything for the comments. <laughs> it drives you mad. Imagine me trying to use it. Honestly, I straightened it all out before we went live and then, you know, you turn around two or three times and that's how it goes. I mean, my camera is equipped with Wi-Fi tethering. It's just not really good. So, so. <laughs> Brad has just asked, is Danger your middle name, Gavin? Well, actually, there's a you funny can, you story. You can answer that question. Yeah, I can. <laughs> We were going to change it for one of his special birthdays. He was going to change his... his <laughs> mid well, he hasn't actually got a middle name, so we were going to add one. We were mm. going to... <laughs> left out. <laughs> yeah, he did feel a bit left out. So um, we were going to actually do that, but we were also in the throes of signing up to buy a new house and a mortgage and stuff, and we thought it would just complicate things. <laughs> Imagine with the, the paperwork. <laughs> so nearly is the answer. <laughs> yeah, but I was very tempted with that. Right, okay, Sophie, if you'd like to come back in, so what do you do if you're in eight foot by eight foot and somebody on a live stream asks you to do a full length portrait? Well, you've got a couple of options. The first one is get the widest angle lens that you own and do something creative, mm. um, which is all right, you know, it's if, if you want to have l large feet and hands and things, that, that, that works. Um, or you try and get the, the maximum distance between you and the subject, which if you're into your maths, then that is always the diagonal, isn't it? So I've got Sophie in a corner and I'm going to go, I actually get to pinch your chair, which is kind of cool, right on the other corner. Oh, it's lovely. It's really good. Let's put it into TTL mode. Let's just do it. Uh, for those that want to know what flash I'm using, uh, I'm using the Flashpoint Explore 100 Pro. And the reason I'm using this light it is the smallest little light I've got. So it doesn't take up much space when I'm putting it up in the air or um, getting it close to the ceiling, uh, which is effectively what I've got there. It's just out of your shot, but it is. Okay, let's do full length portrait. Here we go. Marvellous. Full length portrait. There we are. So this is taken at 14 millimeters on my camera. If you're a full frame user, that equates to a 28 millimeter lens, way wider than you would perhaps normally take. But the art of wide angle photography is to be at your subjects mid rift height. Okay, so if I suddenly decided to be six foot six or taller and I kind of tilt my camera down, suddenly everything starts looking really weird. If I'm really short and start tilting my camera, tilting my camera up, I can still do full length, but everything starts to look a little bit creative. Okay, nothing wrong with those. They're just not as real as if I get my camera and put it roughly you know, centered with Chloe. So I'm not trying to angle my camera up and down, just like we were talking about earlier, where I was talking about having a model that's roughly the same height as you. 
The same applies if you're doing full length, but rather than lining up with their eyes, you're lining up with their midriffs. Just how it works, okay? So I can do that, but it's not very exciting. It's all right. Okay, let's see if we can make it a bit more interesting. I can make it more interesting by moving. Let's come to the other side with my lovely cable that no one's bothered about. Okay. Now I'm actually going to not do a full length because the floor isn't particularly interesting because I've made it difficult for myself by laying out rugs, which was a good idea at the time. You see, that's okay. I kind of like that better. TTL is doing all right, but it's not really doing me any huge favors. Let's try down here. Okay, it's okay, but I think I can do a little bit better. So let's make things a little bit more interesting. Um, how are we going to do this? We can move this around a little bit. One second. Okay, let's see. I did have a question um, from 2KG saying, how about using a strip box? Oh, maybe. Yeah, I can do that. We can do that in a minute. Then we'll, we'll finish with this one and we'll move on to the strip box. It's good call. I will get to that. Okay, uh, Sophie, I'm going to pop this near your chin. Here we go. Uh, oh, I'm going to press that button and then pop it near your chin. And I'm going to press this button and actually put it in manual mode. Too many buttons. So I've turned the flash. I don't know if you can see, but it's not pointing at Sophie at all. It's pointing at the wall. But Sophie, can you see any of that white? Yes. If Sophie can see the white, the light will reach her. Okay, and I'm at one quarter power on my little 100 flash. Explore 100, small but mighty. Okay, one quarter power. I'm going to come down here. What I'm looking for is a bit more of a graduation in the light. So I'm trying to get a little bit more um, of a, a gentle edge to it. But yep, there's a hot spot in there. I don't mind that. Others may disagree. I quite like that. Okay, let's just so see how we go. Comment from uh, Leslie saying, geez, even at weird angles, these photos look nice because of the poses of Sophie. Okay. The question immediately is, who's at the weird angle? <laughs> Sophie or the lady leaving the comments? So, <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, maybe they're climbing up a mountain and, you know, who knows? Uh, that's not bad, that's okay. Um, let's throw a grid on it. I've got a grid somewhere. Yeah, let's pop a grid on here. Okay, it will sound a bit rustly, by the way. <laughs> Sorry about that, that's not the, the microphone, that's the real world. Okay, so what does a grid do? What, what's a grid gonna add to this, or maybe take away from this image? What, what's, its, what's its purpose? Is it there just to make me look cool? Hey, look, I've got a grid. Look how good I am, I have a grid. Is it there to actually do something? Actually, it can be both, I should say. <laughs> it could be both. Okay, let's go back into my corner. Oh, let's take a meter reading. Let's do this properly. If you're going to do it, do it properly. Sophie, I'm going to pop this near your chin. F6.3. Apparently F5, always in the middle. So you've had some answers. Okay, what have uh, we got? So we've got the grid constraints the light spill. Uh, direct the light and stop the spread. Uh, so the model knows you're a legit photographer. That's the answer. That's the answer. <laughs> no spread. Control the light spill. Um, yeah, control. Yeah. Yeah. God, oh, see, far too good this audience. Uh, very good. Yeah, exactly that. Okay, so it, it gives you control of the spread of the light. It might not control the spill of the light because it's still going to bounce off the wall. It's still going to hit things. But what a grid does in a small space is it gives you another level of control that you don't get without a grid. Now, if you saw my live stream last month where we did softbox truths and traps, I showed you in, in pretty straightforward detail how a softbox is a very, very flat light. It comes out at 170 degrees, even if you get a strip box. Go watch that. If you've missed that, that's fascinating technical reviewing. A grid constrains the light. It stops it from spreading out. It doesn't focus the light. It doesn't increase the light. It decreases the light, if anything. It's just to stop it going absolutely everywhere and giving you a little bit more control. The easiest way is to see it. 
and I strongly advocate taking a picture like this, whoops, here we go, a picture like this one, but also taking this picture, I'm going to be technically leaning outside, it's a good job you can't see this, <laughs> outside of my walls, but can you see that picture? That's not a picture for anybody other than the photographers, that, that's for us, to see where the light is going, to understand how the, the, the grid is giving me a little bit of control, because earlier the light was bouncing off the ceiling, now the light is still bouncing off the ceiling, but it's much less of a, a bounce, it still happens. Okay, so that gives me a little bit of uh, control of the grid and uh, the, uh, the spread and spill and direction of the light. And in the smaller the space, that becomes an increasingly important thing. So I've just feathered it slightly away, I've adjusted the light to compensate a little bit. Kind of cool, like that, really nice. I'm going to come down the side because time's ticking, blimey, where did the time go? Okay, this looks really nice. I like this angle. This is a nice angle. Leaving plenty of room for Sophie to look into. Beautiful. And I don't need to do it through the viewfinder. I really should stop doing that so much. It's kind of cool to use the EVF. Oh, bless me. Bless you. <laughs> well, you managed to make the fan spin on the flash as well. It's impressive. Okay. So corners will look really nice. I like corners, they, they work really well. But there's a question that I know, I mean, I can't see the comments, but I know the comments is awash with this question. And it's not, will he put the strip box on eventually? Yes, I will. It's, how would this be improved if I used the light strainer? This is what you wanted to know, isn't it? Can I use a light strainer? Will it improve this photo? Does it even work in a small home studio? I mean, eight foot by eight foot, is that enough space to make a light strainer work? Well, <laughs> there's only one way to find that out. Let's give it a whirl. So. Well, now they're asking for the light strainer. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, you wanted the light strainer. You thought it was gone. No, no, it's back. So I but pasta time. <laughs> maybe party time. Yeah, that maybe, uh, maybe that. Yeah, yeah. It's auto correct for you, isn't it? Okay, so I'm going to strap the light strainer to my light. I'll bring it over so you can see it because this is obviously a very high tech um, device with with the holes in it, as you can see there. Um, you know, it, it's. It's a, it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? I love the, um, the, the beautiful smooth lines that are definitely not wonky. It, it's, it's perfect fit. It's a perfect fit. It's, um, do we have a question about the uh, light strainer? We do. Oh, do from we? from yeah. Louis, does it matter if the strainer were silver? Uh, no, probably not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh yes it does. No, um, sorry Louis, yes, it's very important that it's black. All things that are photographic have to be black. I think it would look like spacey, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> it probably wouldn't make any difference at all, uh, because it's got to stop the light. Um, so, um, but yeah, so technically, Louis, no, it makes no difference. But actually, yes, it really does matter. Hmm. <laughs> Okay, uh, so, so yeah, you see where you are, let's, let's see. I've no idea, I'm gonna guess half power. Should we guess a quarter power? Let's guess a quarter power. Let's try that. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> Come on, who doesn't want a light strainer in their life? <laughs> First picture, straight out. Oh, dear. Oops, oh, nearly, nearly stepped out of my room. Amazing. You've had some shouts for smoke. Oh, I should turn the smoke on, actually. Yeah. That's a good point. Did they see the smoke machine in the corner? <laughs> uh -huh. Pretty cool. And I'm moving around, I'm getting different results. This is hard light. This isn't soft light. This is definitely uh, much more aggressive, shadowy light, which Sophie can definitely handle. Not all models can. So here's another little, let's just finish with that one, another little thing you need to be aware of in a small studio, you're going to have to be quite good at cloning because it doesn't matter how good you are, eight feet by eight feet, at some point something is going to get in your shot. It's just a fact of life. But that looks pretty cool. Happy with that. Uh, right, okay. Uh, let's do one more before we move on to the smoke. So I'll plug the smoke machine in, let that warm up. Bear with me it takes five minutes for that to warm up. 
Okay, so we're going to finish this little section before we get into smoke with the question and hopefully the answer. Well, what if you don't have white walls? What if you have a, an actual room that you live in? Or maybe you keep your two cars in? You know, that's a possibility. Okay, so in which case, cover up the walls. Yeah, you might want to step aside. I don't want to get in the way. There we go. So think about how you can cover up the walls. So you might use um, black curtains, black drapes, or any other fabric. You might use smoke to hide things. You might use an actual purpose-made background, which is what I'm going to use here. So this is a Manfrotto collapsible two-in-one background. I think we'll only get time for one side. So I've gone with the grey side. We'll pop that up there. Lovely, there we go. Now usually I would get some sort of stand. I've got magnetic stands, uh, sort of like a, a light stand with a magnetic clamp on the top, but that would take up another foot of space. And when you're working in eight feet only, one foot lost is a percentage of that. I don't know how much because I'm trying to work this out in my head at the same time. It's less than, more than 12, 10, 12, 12. It's a percentage of that. You got a question about the smoke? They're not listening. It's fine. <laughs> Let me just find it. Uh, so actually, there's two questions about the smoke. So um, Todd said, do you have a smoke versus mist preference? Yep. Uh, and there is another one. Okay, I've, just lost, that one first. I've just lost it. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I prefer smoke. It has more de uh, density, more texture. Um, mist is uh, more of a haze normally, and that's okay. And certainly if you're doing video work, haze is a, is a thing that happens an awful lot. You don't believe how often haze occurs until you start to look for it. Um, smoke is definitely more of a, a definite thing. You've really put smoke in the scene. It's got texture and shape and form. So I prefer that. Uh, so I found it. <laughs> uh, Ricardo said, wonder how Gavin would get rid of the smoke in such a small space. Yeah. Uh, windows, <laughs> open the windows. Um, so Ricardo, I use a specific type of smoke. Look for fast dissipating or, or sometimes known as CO2 effect. It's not actual CO2. CO2 effect smoke, uh, but fast dissipating smoke is the answer. We it's did actually do well. a video, didn't we? We did a whole smoke. video. So if you look up um, on the back catalogue of um, videos on Adorama for Gavin, um, there is one on smoke and the different types of smoke. And who was the model for that one? It was Sophie. It was Sophie. In the barn before it fell down. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Sophie, if you want to come just stand up against the wall. So I've switched out to a strip box. A strip box is just a soft box that is thinner. I've kept the grid on it. If you want to know the difference with and without the grid, go check out last month's live stream where we demo that. I'm not going to do that again because time is of the essence. Um, so the strip box is going to give me a, a different pattern of light. But if you didn't see last week's, last month's live stream rather, let me show you what you missed. Okay, Sophie, I'm going to take a wide shot first of all, but we'll get the meter reading right. I'm going to pop this near your chin. F4.5, we're at F5.6, F5, F5.6, F5 again, if you're just sort of joining us and uh, you're after my camera settings, hang on, I've got to get me and Sophie out the shot. That's my camera settings, ISO 200, 250th of a second, F5.6, it hasn't changed throughout, at least not on purpose. Okay, so... Quick little test photo. Fantastic. Lovely. And if you think, yeah, look at that, I've got the strip of light. Remember to take the wide picture. Let's see, yeah, I can get a wide one in. Here we go. And when you take the wide picture, you can see that the strip of light isn't really a strip of light because it's coming down and across here, but it's also going up here. So it's about what, a 45, 50 degree, probably, something like that, beam of light. And it's barely a beam, but it is constricted by the grid, but it's not as narrow as you might imagine. Wide shots are so important to understand your kit, especially in the small space, because you can see what surfaces are being lit. And I'm getting an awful lot of light on this back wall, 
and just above Sophie's head. Okay, let's take a couple of photos. Let's do it. So Biggie Z said, did the guys agree on the black and white striped top or was that just amazingly good coincidence that it works so well in this shoot? <laughs> You can answer that. I, I, your styling is your thing. Well, yeah, we normally have a little uh, chat before, um, but I know Soph's wardrobe mostly. <laughs> uh, and I know if I just give her a few little words of what we're doing, she's going to bring some stuff along. And, and yeah, it's, it's always perfect. So it's great. Fantastic. And it does work so well. So I've just angled it slightly, just to put a slightly more hot spot into the top left corner. Okay, beautiful. Okay. I've got a question about the backdrop that you put up mm. uh, from Joe. Uh, why did you go with the backdrop wide instead of long? Okay, um, for the simple reason that I knew I was going to photograph them. That is a great question, by the way. I knew I was going to photograph them wide because... <gasps> Sorry. Bless you, bless you. <laughs> it's the smoke, isn't it, that we haven't used yet. I know, it gets to me as well. Um, because I knew we were going to photograph these long. You're looking at a 16 by 9 frame. If we were doing this on Instagram, I'd be turning this up the other way. I'd have it vertical because that fits the, the final photos that I'm going to be taking. So that, that's simply that, just final results in mind. Alrighty, okay, where do we get to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you going to sneeze again? Go for it. I've got to set some. Start shooting. <laughs> well, I've got to go and set something up, so if you want to step out of the way, and then I'll <laughs> set this up, the last little bit up, so let's get this out of the way. Pop that over there. And take that down off. I've got a question. I'm not yes. sure if you'll be able to answer. Um, this is Photo Ray. Uh, does the sensor in those light meters wear out or become inaccurate over time? I have a Minolta meter that's 40 years old. Wow. <laughs> I think I've got a Minolta meter that's not that far off that age. Um, as far as I know, no. I mean, if it's lasted 40 years and it's still working, <laughs> I think that's probably answered that. Um, as far as I know, subject to accidental damage, shall we say, it'll keep going and going and going. Uh, will it shift? I don't know, may do, but I suspect it'll happen so gradually that you would learn to live with it. And it's like any bit of kit. A meter, a flash meter is only a guide. It's not, it's not gospel. You don't have to stick to it. You can say, well, that's what you said, but I like everything to be slightly brighter than my flash meter tells me. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, so I think the answer is probably not really. Keeps going. We had another question. Uh, this is from Matthias saying, how do you decide the themes of your lives? The what, what? How do you decide the themes? Oh, the theme. The theme. Well, it normally gets to about two weeks ahead and then I go, oh no, I better go live. It's not quite how we go. Um, so they are things that interest me. That, that's kind of it, really. If it's something that I find interesting, I think that will come over in the presentation. I think anyone that's trying to demonstrate something that they're not enthusiastic about, you'll quickly know. At least I hope you would, anyway. Alrighty, so let's get this off. Right, so we're going to finish with a little bit of more colourful options in a small space. How long have I got? Ten minutes. I can do this in ten. Easy. Easy. And choice of light stands. Um, and choice of lights, actually. Where's my flash gone? There it is. Okay. So, the flash I've been using is this one right here. Let's pop it out and show it to you in case you've missed it. Okay, so this is the Flashpoint Explore 100 Pro. Oh, it must be good. TTL. So it's a tiny little thing about the size of you know, a can of food, really. It's pretty small. It does a great job in a small space with small light sources. You don't really need a huge amount of power, so I kind of felt this was a good choice for that space. I've also paired it with one of the new auto stands, which I've got a stand bag on, which kind of collapse, which have a very small footprint in a small space studio. Okay, so you can kind of pick those up, I don't know if that comes over. See how that works? 
put it down and it spreads out, but it doesn't take up a great big footprint. It's actually slightly more smaller than C stands, and weirdly, C stands are a good choice for a small space because their feet don't actually take up a huge amount of room. <clears throat> However, if you can get a matte black C stand, that's what I would get because they are a bit shiny. Okay, so let's get a couple of lights. I'm going to pair it with a little speed light um, for this bit. Okay, something like that. Something like that. Let's put that there. Okay, let's make sure they are on the same channel but different groups. Uh, we are, that's on group B, that's on A. Right, Sophie, in you come. Don't need that anymore, that can go. <clears throat> so I've got some lights and I'm going to do everything wrong. I'm going to put them behind Sophie, I'm going to point them so they're facing me, they're going to be too close. I didn't trip over that, that was fine, that was quite safe. Perfectly okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put them in TTL mode because, well, why not? Let's just see what happens. And that one in TTL as well. Okay, here we go, let's just see what we get. It's a great way to learn. Take a bad photo on purpose and accept that it's gonna be bad and just see what happens. Okay, so here's where we're at. I like flare, I like lens flare. I think it works quite nicely. I think I'd like to put a bit of colour in because we're short of time. I'm going to kind of jump ahead slightly. So I'm going to add some colour to those. I need to make a decision. Which one is going to be my key light and which one is going to be my fill light? And I'm going to make my key light the Explore 100. And I'm going to stick an orange filter on that one. And my fill light is going to be the little speed light. And the little speed light gets a blue filter. So I'm putting orange as my primary colour and blue as my secondary colour. I've got some nice comments about the photo, actually, that you said, you know. What, a terrible one? Uh, that oh, that's lucky. Look, if you look like bad that. bad at all. That actually looks cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Alrighty. OK, same basic photo, but this time with added colour to the flare, which is nice. I'm going to angle this one a little bit more towards me. OK. And deliberately doing something. The minute you start to say, I'm doing something wrong on purpose, that makes it okay. That makes it your thing. You're in control. If somebody else is wrong, if you're doing it on purpose, is your right. Does that make sense? It kind of makes sense to me. So that little bit of flare that you've got further down the other bit of colour. That bit there? Uh, yeah, where's that coming from? That is coming probably from this light up here, I would imagine. I to say, that's a really good question. That is a good, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Oh, that's your question. <laughs> okay, I think it's coming from there. That's, that's kind of where I think it, looking at the direction of it, it should be coming from the opposite corner. It could, might, I mean, there's an easy way to tell. Let's turn it off. Let's turn off. Uh, okay, I'll turn the blue one off. Is it still there? Then it's coming from the orange one. There you are. That was a good question, well done. Does that sound really patronising now? <laughs> it does, but you know, I'll let it go this time. Oh yeah, for now, you wait. <laughs> you wait until we finished. Uh, okay, so that's kind of nice. Uh, we want to put some smoke in, don't we? So let's get the smoke machine. Let's get the remote control. Okay, important questions to ask your model before you put any smoke into the rim. Sophie, you haven't developed any breathing issues in the last, I don't know, sort of 90 minutes. No. Good, just checking. We did ask earlier, but uh, it's always good to check. <clears throat> if you have any smoke alarms in the vicinity, you might want to consider putting um, uh, shower um, caps. caps. Yeah, shower things like you get from hotel rooms. Yeah, the thing you take from the hotel room and you go, I'll take that, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Pop them over smoke machines. Two smoke uses, alarms. yeah, smoke machines. And also smoke you can alarms. put... Smoke alarms, yeah. <laughs> smoke machines. I know. Not smoke machines. <laughs> Welcome to my world. <laughs> or if you're a baker and you make bread, you can use it to put over your bowl. So you have to put a little bit of oil on it and then put it over the bowl and it helps the um, to bread to prove underneath. There you go. Adorama TV, baking tips, live. <laughs> we should do live baking tips. Okay, so a little bit of smoke in the room. This is fast dissipating smoke, so it will disappear incredibly quickly 
Uh, and I'm also still on TTL, and at this point I'm going to start to take control because TTL has no idea what's going on anymore. So I'm going to turn everything back onto manual mode, and I'm going to set my blue light to be a bit brighter. Let's go for one thirty-second power. Let's go for one thirty-second power on both. Let's work it out. Okay, a bit more smoke. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. We'll just have a little dribble of smoke coming in. Wait for that to fill. Okay, small space, so what I can't do is what I would normally do, and that's try and keep the smoke behind Sophie. So I'm kind of working reasonably quickly. That's not bad, that looks pretty good. I just want a little bit more on A, the blue, the, the orange one. And also I'm gonna turn the orange one less orange, that's probably enough smoke, <laughs> by turning my white balance, which was on 5,200, Let's make my white balance maybe 3,200. So, um, so the blue becomes more blue and the orange becomes less orange, more white. Biggie Z's asks, would a small handheld smoke machine work in studio photography? Oh, I've seen some really cool ones coming out lately. So if you look over that way for me. Uh, I've seen some fantastically cool ones. Check out what they actually use, because I was looking at one that had a, it was oil-based smoke rather than water-based smoke that I'm using here. And I have a... You know, a few questions on whether that would be a good idea or not. But uh, yeah, these things are getting smaller and better and looking awesome as an option. OK, so this works quite nicely. How long have we got? We've got three minutes. So I figured to end, let's put that on. <clears throat> let's do something really crazy. So we're in a small space. The silver light stand actually came out better than I thought. I definitely would have to clone it out. So that's just a thing I'll have to live with. Let's just put that through the invisible wall and out the way. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Slid further than I thought. Uh, could you hold that for me? Thanks. Smash in. And we'll put the collapsible auto stand out the way. There we go. And uh, yeah, could you hold that for me as well? Marvellous. So what do you do if you don't have a light stand? You don't have space for a light stand. You don't want to clone light stands out of your shot. You give the lights to the model. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Now, this is a numbers game. This is not going to be one shot and uh, it works because Sophie's going to move around with the lights. The distance is going to change all the time. I could try TTL. It's just going to be quite complex. So I'm going to ride my, my settings for this light. Okay, the, the orange, the key light effectively. That's the one that Sophie's going to hold towards her face and slightly towards us. And we're just going to snap away, see what happens. Are you ready? ready. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put that light to 1 16th power, so it's in the middle of the range. And uh, yeah, here we go. It's a bit lower. That's pretty good. I'm just going to get one in focus. Here it comes. I'm going to put a bit of light in front of Sophie, which is not normally where I would put it. Whoa! <laughs> here we go. Fantastic. Okay, I'm staying within my eight feet by eight feet. I'm in the far corner, just like I was earlier. So I've got the maximum distance because I don't want smoke in my face. It's not quite true. It's just, it works because I've made a corner of, of darkness. A corner of darkness, sounds awesome. Oh, right, you'd like that, <laughs> Sophie. I was gonna that say, sounds that like sounds like Sophie's favorite. Your next living room. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that, a corner of darkness, yes please. Uh, I'm also aware of my angle towards the lights because I can, I don't know if you can see from there. You can barely see Sophie. Great. There's a great comment here. Go on. Uh, from Ryland. Could she balance the camera on her foot and eliminate Gavin altogether? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'd have to put it on self-timer, but uh, I think that could work. I mean, oh, we've run out of time. Otherwise, we could, we could have tried that as well. I was up for trying that. Otherwise, that would, have been a, that would have been a great idea. Love that idea. Let's just have a quick flick back through, see what we got. These are good. I mean, there we are. We'll stop there. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Considering that there was a, a very random nature to that. Yeah, why not? That, I'll take those away from you. Thank you very much <laughs> indeed. Uh, there you go. Small space, eight by eight, or one point, no, 2.4 meters by 2.4 meters by eight feet high as well. You can do an awful lot with it. I mean, we, we barely scratched the surface, but the key is 
control the, the lights. So black drapes made everything we did kind of doable to a degree because imagine that this was a black wall and that was a black wall because that's effectively what they are because there is nothing there and the distance is effectively making those black walls. Getting control of the light, whatever room you're in, is absolutely key. And also, having fun. That's probably the most important thing. Right, that brings us to the end of the session. Uh, Sam, have we got anything else I missed? Uh, no, there's been loads and loads of interaction, though. Uh, some really great comments. So thanks for answering questions I haven't managed to get to. Uh, really appreciate it. And uh, I hope you'll join us again next month. It's uh, about the middle of March. Yeah, there's it? a bit of a gap for some yeah, bizarre reason. So, so we're yeah, six weeks, five bit, weeks away. Yeah, something like that. So yep. keep an eye out. And we, I don't know if we've got a theme for it yet. I've just had a really good idea, though, but I'll talk to you about <laughs> tell, it. Tell me afterwards, yeah. maybe not now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, OK, so catch you next time. Thank you, everybody. Huge thanks to Freya and Sam for doing all the behind the scenes stuff. But give it up for Sophie, the amazing Sophie. Link in the video description down below, along with gear link and everything else. If you've enjoyed this, we go live regularly right here on Adorama TV, both on this channel. Uh, you'll find Seth going live uh, every Wednesday, I think. Or maybe that's on the events channel, because we also have Adorama events. So go check out the Adorama events. Events YouTube channel, a completely separate channel for everything that happens in the store. And there are loads of amazing events. It's free to subscribe, free to watch. Go give that some love as well. So that just leaves me to say, I'm Gavin Howey. Thanks for watching. <laughs>